today we're going to be talking about closing the loop and how to achieve sustainability through feedback. So we talk about uh, biophilic design and architecture a lot. And uh, one of the most basic biological structures is that of the feedback loop. Cells or organisms will exchange data with their environment and reach equilibrium that way. And essentially, that is the goal of sustainability, is reaching equilibrium with our environment. So our current design practice goes from schematic or concept design through construction and occupancy. And the design team rarely actually gets to see what happens uh, during occupancy. There's a broken loop because we don't have feedback on what goes on inside the building. So what does this mean? It means that we're really not very good at predicting how our buildings are going to perform in occupancy. So this graph over here is kind of a buckshot, but it shows design EUI, energy use intensity, and measured EUI. And if we were really good at predicting them with energy models, you'd have a linear line and a stronger correlation. And the reason that it's so hard is because there's a lot of variables that go into how much energy a building consumes. These are the ones that the design team has control over. And these are the ones that can actually go into an energy model. And even still, there's a lot missing that kind of come from tenants and other things that we don't have control over and can't make good assumptions about. So what do we do? We need to close the loop. We need to measure the data that's available in the building, uh, verify our assumptions and compare it to the model, make operational improvements during occupancy, and use that to inform the next iteration of design. So inter M and V, or measurement and verification. There's our working definition. It's a systematic process through which a building's performance is monitored and compared to the predicted performance. And in doing this comparison, we can see and tune the building to perform how it was actually designed. And to accomplish this, we really need the whole design team to be involved. And there's some new members that you may not have seen before. We need a M&V analysis team to look at the data that's coming from the building. We need our facility managers to be involved to make those operational improvements. And most importantly, we need the tenants to be involved. Uh, that's kind of the big unknown variable that we don't see a lot. A lot of times this is pitched as an added cost to owners who'd rather be done paying for their building once it's occupied. But really, there's a lot of benefits to them, including operational energy cost savings, uh, potentially higher rent, and actually seeing their sustainability goals be achieved in reality, which is not always the case. So what ends up happening in a conventional data collection system is really that the building management system is there to kind of manage the mechanical system. And then every once in a while, maybe you know, electrical panels, lighting, or submetering kind of gets tied into that. But it tends not to be a particularly user-friendly interface. It tends not to really pull all that information together in an, in an intelligent way. So what we're proposing is that moving forward, you know, you move forward with an optimized data collection system, which essentially takes all that information, really puts it in in the building management system, where the building engineer can operate with that. But then really we add the data storage and analytics side of things and produce a front end user interface that can be used for these different uh, people down the road. And what does this require? It requires a integrated design, especially related to getting that information, getting that data. So your electrical uh, engineer, your mechanical engineer, your controls contractor, all have to pull together. This is a metering diagram from a project we worked on. So that all that information is collated in a way that makes sense and is accumulated the way that you want it to be caught. The other thing is that the user interface needs to be designed appropriately. It needs to be thought about. This is sort of the history where you would use Excel or something to try to look at what's going on in the building. And that's just really not that useful. We're moving forward with a lot of products that are out there for um, an actual useful graphical user interface that can be tuned for who it's appropriate for, right? So that might mean that an engineer or facility manager is looking at something with a little more detail in a program, this one's called SkySpark, or you know, you're, for reporting, you can use something like Lucid over here as an example for where owners might wanna see that information uh, in a more graphical space that doesn't have to you know, dive in as well. The other place this comes into play is really about engaging the tenants and making sure that they're getting the information that they need. Um, in a lot of projects, Tom actually mentioned something there, where you're trying to compare your usage against your neighbors so you can actually really understand what impact you are having. So providing a good interface for those people is really important. And this comes into play, we talk about kind of two different ways that occupants and buildings interact. One is that a building may 
be really trying to pay attention to the occupants on a smart building sensor configuration. The other is that the occupants are paying attention to the way the building's operating, maybe in a more passive situation. In either case, measurement and verification is really necessary to make sure that those, uh, that dynamic is maintained. Zach's going to talk about a, a there you example go. Yeah, here. Here's a quick case study for you, a project that WSP worked on called Federal Center South. Uh, and this project had a really high performance target where they actually needed to meet an EUI in actual occupancy. So measurement and verification becomes really important in that context. And it's also especially true when you have a complex um, HVAC system. So as you can see from this diagram, we've got passive elements, we've got ground source, um, we've got, I think, five to ten different modes of operation that came into play. So measurement and verification allows us to get a clearer picture of what's actually happening when you have a dynamic structure like a building. Uh, so this graph is a little light, but it, you can see MMV in the process. So uh, the yellow line is the predicted lighting performance, and the blue is the actual. So this helps us identify what's happening and maybe what's not supposed to happen. You can see there's kind of a high base load overnight that we didn't think was going to happen when we did the energy model. Um, this graph shows the predicted um, model performance on the dotted line there and the actual consumption. And this chunk here is the MNV period where we're kind of tuning the building and making it align with how it was actually designed. So that's really uh, MNV practice at its best. And so that, oh, that's right. Well, that's our case uh, for MNV. Basically, um, we need to see what's going on inside the building so that we can operate the building as it's designed and also so that we can design the building the way it's going to be operated. Thank you.